I've inherited a database at a new company and in the DDL for the database, I assume the scripts, I see a mixture of number, number 38, integer, numeric, decimal, etc. Do all of these and there, I assume the differences between them have an impact on performance during queries? And the simple answer to that is no. Now that seems a very sort of broad, just nope, not a problem, don't worry about it, etc. So we'll do a demo to actually prove that. But I'll explain why, once you see the demo, you'll see that it's very easy to justify why you won't see a performance difference. So I'm going to create a table called T, and I've picked a, a arbitrary selection of some of the cool number data types you can use in an Oracle database. C1 is a number. C2 is number 38, which is as big as you can go in terms of integers. C3 is number 10, a smaller integer. C4 is a float. C5, numeric 10,2. C6 is a decimal. C6, C7 is an int. C8 is a small int. A lot of these are Oracle terms, but also some of these are the ANSI standard terms for numeric data types in the Oracle database. Let's insert the number 177 into every single one of them. Now, there's a command in Oracle called the dump command, which shows you the actual byte representation of these things, and also a command called vsize, which shows you how many bytes they occupy. So let's look at C1 to C4 first. So C1 to C4, so C1 is... These are the bytes that are stored, 194, 278, and the size is three bytes. C2, different data type, same data. C3, different data type, same data. C4, same data. If we continue on, C5, same data, same data, same data, same data. All those different data types, when you actually put 177 in there, stored the exact same byte representation. And the reason for that is fairly simple. If you do a describe on that table, even though my DDL was decimal, small int, int, number, et cetera, et cetera, this is how the Oracle database has interpreted it. It said a number is a number, fair enough. Number 38 is number 38. It's effectively a largest integer you can take. Number 10 is a integer limited to the size of 10 digits. Float is actually float 126, number 10 comma two, but look at the int, small int, et cetera decimal, they're just viewed as number 38. Almost with the exception of there's a couple, which we'll talk about in a second, almost all the ANSI standard numeric definitions will be mapped to Oracle's own internal number format. And we saw there that we had, you know, 197 to something. The byte representation of how Oracle stores a number is perhaps beyond the scope of this office hour session because it would take a fair while. But in simplest terms, we're storing scientific notation versions of every single number, as in the power of 10 and then the decimal component. Um, we do some offsets here and there to make sure we never store all zeros in a byte field from historical reasons, but that's roughly what we're doing. Let's now delete our table and explore a bit further as to what some of the implications might be when we deal with other numbers. So now I'm going to insert one seventh into all those same values. Let's have a look now at what we get. When I query those eight columns, in a number column, we get an arbitrary number of decimal points. For number 38, it's an integer. The decimals are discarded, so it has to be zero. Number 10, yes, gone. It's an integer. This is a float. We got a number of decimal points. Number 10, comma 2, we only get two decimal points. Integer, small int, etc., decimal, all got basically mapped to zero because they all get mapped to a new number integer format. No matter what you choose in terms of descriptive, be aware that under the covers, we're generally going back to Oracle's internal data types. One thing that is important to realize is if you do specify something as just number, you're telling the database, this is the biggest arbitrary precision that you can handle. You know, number simply means use as many integers as you can, use as many decimal points as you can within the realms of the size of a number data type. The maximum size of a number is 22 bytes. In this case, we actually used 21 to store all this information. So in terms of performance, it's very unlikely that you'll see an impact. But be aware that if you only want to store five or six decimal places and you just use number, then there's a very good chance that when you store things which are not integers, you're going to get a much larger number of significant digits for things that are repeating fractions, things like a third, a seventh, anything that is not bound in terms of its decimal precision. So that will be 21 bytes instead of a much smaller amount. So be aware of that. Will it hurt you in terms of performance? I'd say not. 
The reason for that is even if you had a billion of these, if you've gone from five bytes to 20 bytes, right? That's for one column in a big long table. If the column has any kind of string data, it's going to be negligible in terms of percentage. In niche cases, maybe you, you see a significant degradation, but it's going to be very, very rare. Let's now look at column number two. That was different. Notice in this case, because we rounded that down to zero, the length is only one byte compared to 21. If you do have integers, use integer data types to keep them nice and small. Same thing, this was the uh, float. Float came down once again at 20 bytes. C5D was number 10, 2. So in this case, we stored just 0.14 and only used a couple of bytes to store that. So the number of digits is typically going to be indicative of the number of significant digits you'll need. Having said all that, there's a couple of niche cases that you need to be aware of. If we insert the values 1.23, 1.23, 1.23 into this table, which is number 5, comma 2, C float and float 5, what pops out? For number 5, comma 2, five digits of which two can be decimals, we get 1.23, as you'd expect. For a float, which got mapped internally to a number style data type, we get 1.23. For a float 5, we get 1.2. Float with brackets has different precision rules when it comes to the Oracle database. So be aware that would be, you know, that would probably be of concern. You'd be worried about it. You get similar issues when it comes to using binary float and binary double, especially people who are C programmers or have come from say Windows environments where things like binary double and, and double ints, et cetera, are commonplace, often get drawn into uh, using these data types in the Oracle database. There's a reason Oracle invented its own proprietary number format. And that is to give consistency and precision across all the different platforms, no matter what kind of OS platform or architecture you're using. Let me insert 100.04 into all these three. What do I get for C1? Well, I get 100.04. That's what I expect because that's the value I put in. What do I get for the binary float? I get 100.04 and a little bit extra. That's the inherent nature of floating point numbers when you're using these native data types. But the binary double seems to be okay. Or is it? This is actually just a formatting thing. If I crank out the format to larger, even the binary double, which is meant to be you know, more precise, you get 100.04, and then way down here, you get an extra one. If you're adding up these or using them for currency or adding up lots of things, then ultimately you're probably going to get yourself into some sort of strife. This is why we generally prefer people just to use the number data types. So as we saw, there are some niche cases here, binary floats, et cetera, where you do need to take a lot of care if you're storing numeric data. There are use cases for those data types, but be aware of the implications when it comes to precision. To answer the question of whether you should use, let's say I've got a, a nine digit number. Should I use number, number 38, or maybe number nine? I recommend using number nine if you're only storing nine digit numbers, not for performance not for space, because if you're just storing integers, a number nine, a nine digit number in number nine, will use the same space as you saw as a number 10, as a number 38, even as a number column. It's the significant digits that matters. However, I think of the data types as being effectively unit tests for your data. It's a way of basically ensuring data quality. If I have a number 38 column, and I'm always expecting nine digits, well, when someone's program stuffs up and puts in 25 digits, your database goes, that's fine. Now that might break all sorts of variables in your code when the data gets you know, queried out. It might break reports because they go too wide. There's all sorts of implications downstream because you let bad data in. If you constrain the data types to the data you're expecting, then effectively it's an insurance policy for all the layers up the stack. So that's why I'm not a fan of people who just use number um, it's pretty rare. In fact, I actually put you know, number, just the plain number data type with no precision, I think is far bigger than you'll ever need. I don't even sequence numbers or random numbers generally don't need 38 digits. The only exception I think where people should use number is if you're storing a GUID. A GUID can be stored in an Oracle number data type because the number of digits is sufficient for the size of a raw GUID when it's mapped back to a number. That's probably the only time I would recommend using the number data type without some form of precision on it.